So guys, we're going to start with a bit of mould still flat. It's 10 inches by 1 and 5 eighths by 3 eighths or 255mm by 40mm by 10mm. Half inch or 12mm would be a lot better. But because I don't have that, we're going to go with 10mm or 3 eighths. So what you want to do, mark your centre line. Go one inch, make a mark, two inch, make another mark, three and a quarter inch, make another mark, four and a half inch, make another mark, and then five and three quarters. And that's your last mark. And then centre punch all the way along. And then what else I've done is I've taken the corners off of one side. So this side, I've taken these corners off. This side, I've left the corners as they are. All I've done is put a nice radius on them. And what this will do is when you're drifting through hot steel, if you had a sharp corner, you've got more chance of marking the metal. With a softer corner, you'll put a softer mark in if it does mark. So that's just another thing. All I used was a rasp, or a file, or a grinder, or you could forge it down and have a bit of practice that way. So this will be your 8mm. This will be your 10mm. 12mm. 16mm. And your 20mm. So that is 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, half inch, 5 eighths, and I think this is right, 13 sixteenths. If it's not right, correct me. And then the rest of the bar, we're going to go probably about an inch away, or say an inch and a half away from your last hole, and then this, this bit here, we draw out into a handle. So guys, first things first, we're going to do the handle. And what I'm going to do is use a spring fuller tool. That's in another video, which I'll put in a corner now, so you can see. And see how to make it. We're going to fuller it in a little bit. Flatten it out, and then what we do is we draw that little bit out at a minute. And we keep it flat, and then that'll give us a slight little transition so we know where we're going for the next stage. So I'm just going to fuller it in a little bit more. If we went full fuller all the way down, then you'd end up with a cold shut in it. So this bit here, you'd, you'd have a hard job getting into there. So what I'm going to do is leave that as it is and then I'm going to take it in the next heat, I'm going to get it hot again, take it to a nice radius edge, put it on an angle, hammer at an angle as well and then we forge this out into an oblong. So now we're going to forge this out into an oblong at an angle, hammer at an angle. Work one side. Work the other side and give it some welly. Keep it flat. 
flat and save knackering myself out, I'm going to get it hot again. So I thought I'd show you guys how I forge. Now she's at a bright orange, I'll put her back in the forge. So guys, this is what we've ended up with after drawing it out. Basically like a tang. And then what next step I'm going to do is round these off, round all the corners off, and then smooth everything out, make it a rounding section, forge a little loop on it so I can hang it up. And then I'm going to flatten it to the same thickness, which is 3 eighths or 10 mil. I'm getting good at these inches now. And then we'll start on the, uh, the actual bolster plate then, which is what I really wanted to show you. But I thought I'd show you how to do the handle, and then you can use that for any sort of tool that you want to hang up. And it's a nice little, uh, nice little feature as well. So I'll round this up in the next heat. Do a little loop, show you all the process, and then we go from there. So I'm going to knock the corners off guys, and I know your time's limited, so I'm going to try and do this pretty quick. If it starts twisting on you, just run down your four original edges. So what I've done is just rounded it up. Uh, this is what we've ended up with. It's got a slight taper to the end. It's got a nice little transition, basically like a round tang. And then the rest of the bar is ready to go. And I'm going to leave this straight without curling this up so that I have something to hold it on and to take it in and out of the fire while I'm doing the punching. And then when we've done the punching, we can then go, everything's finished, we get this bit finished now, and then we'll go and loop this up. And a quicker way of doing this, guys, instead of punching it, you could just over drill it. So you drill the hole to the same size as you drift but then just go one or two mil higher than the size of the drift but this way I'm going to teach you how to do it punching just in case you don't have the drills or you want to do it traditionally so we'll put it back in the fire get it warm and we'll punch the holes what I do is I'll punch all the holes first to the same size to the smallest and then we'll work on the big hole first, we drift that to size, then the next one, drift that to size, next one, so on and so on. So what we're going to do is find our hole. If you scratch over the hole, it fill with scale, so you can see it a little bit easier. And find your hole, centre the bar. Three taps, quench it. If 
three taps and quench it. That was four, sorry. Until it bounces. And then you know you've got the center or you've gone so far. Turn it over. Flatten it. Turn it back over. A couple of little hits. And what that'll do is give you a dark mark. Put your punch on the back. Quench it. And then that'll give you your slug and your hole. But always keep your punch quenched, keep it cold. Because if it gets hot, when you hit the bottom, it'll mushroom out and it'll be very difficult to come out. But that's basically what you're looking for. A little plug then on to the next hole and you want to find your next hole scratch over it center the bar Three taps, call your punch. Till she don't go anymore. Flatten it. Find your dark spot. Be careful when you're trying to knock it out. If it gets stuck, Be careful when you're doing it that you don't mark the other side of this. So that's basically it. Point you up. So that's two holes done. Two heats, two holes. So it's going to take five heats. to do five holes and straighten it before you put it back in keep your metal clean just where you're punching it keep your anvil clean as well find your next hole Punch your punch. Only three hits, not four like I just did. dark spot
quench it at this stage. And that's another hole down. So with the first heat, you want to go over the pritchel hole, take your rain punch, line the hole up with the pritchel hole, you want to go in a few hits, flip it over, straighten it, let the heat sink back into the hole. Go again. So it's not opened it up much, but this is where your heat's come into it. So we go in again. Now she's a little bit too cold, so we'll put her back in the heat. Now we're not far off, probably about 20 mil. So I know when I take this punch into here, into my pritchel, I was going to get stuck. So we have to go to the hardy hole. And you move it. Corner to corner.
turn it over and then do the same. So now I'll see how much further I gotta go. So it's near enough the size of the drift. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the drift now and drift it to size. Put it in vertical. Grab a set of tongs to make sure it stays vertical. Give it some welly. We're gonna turn it over. Flatten it. Do the same in the same heat. And I'm going to keep going as it cools down. drift will become hot so be careful when it goes all the way through and you can chase it around the workshop if you want half my dinner on there. So now she's cool enough, I'm just going to give it a slight straighten. So now we have a fully round, parallel sides. 22, uh, 20, say a 21 mil hole. So now I'm going to go and do the rest. So I'm going to do this a bit more full speed now. This is not demo mode, this is production mode. So I'll leave that heat. Let's come back in slightly. Drift is handy. I use my memory banks. To think where sixteen mil would be.
15 done. So now we go on to 10. So 12 mil oil, not 10 I meant. Got my 12 drift handy. mil drift handy See how easy that is. The smaller rolls are a lot easier. Now we just got to put the 8mm drift in. Well, I'm not even going to use a drift, I'm just going to use a punch and guess 8mm and then put an 8mm drift through, see if it goes through. Now, I don't want to go too mad with this. And then we punch. And the punch is six mil. So the eight mil drift goes straight through, which is exactly what we want. a little clean a very gentle straight on and now she's ready for the next stage the next stage is the important bit Punching the holes is not that important, but this bit is the important bit. So what I'm going to do is get all my drifts, see it doesn't go through. So what I now need to do is take my punch and open it up slightly so that when we're drifting metal, the drift will go all the way through the hole with ease so it doesn't get stuck or anything like that it's, all it is is this 
acts like a back plate. It basically acts the same as what this does. But we'll be using it over the hardy hole rather than the pritchel hole. So you're in turn making a pritchel hole to sit over your hardy hole or your vice or two bits of metal, anything with a gap between it that you can drift through. So I'm going to take a nice heat now. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So I know the 8mm will take the 8mm drift. Now I open up the 10mm. I try the 10mm drift. Ten mil drift flies through. Now I open up the twelve mil. Twelve mil flies through. Open up the 16. 16 flies through. Twenty mil doesn't because we've not opened that, but it's too cold to open it up yet. So I'm gonna take one more heat and we're gonna drift this and I'll probably end up driving the whole punch all the way through. Now the 20 mil will go all the way through. So this is our finished piece. So we've got all the different size holes and they'll all take the drifts that we've made. And if you've not seen the videos on the drifts yet, I'm going to put it in the corner now. You just click on that, go watch it, figure out how to make drifts and you'll be able to do this. Now what I'll do, I'll give it a good wire brush, a good straighten, straighten off his handle so he's central and then we'll go on the handle then. So I got his puppy roaring for a good wire brushing. dunk it in the water now and then because then that brings down the temperature and the colours a lot more so the scale doesn't have time to form now she's at a cherry ready we go along and flatten it keep your anvil clean And that's basically it. 
So I'll put about 50, 60 mil, two inch over the edge of the anvil. And I'll do a close to a 90 degree bend. Then hold it up vertical. Take it over the edge of the anvil and that will start our loop. Then we go over the horn of the anvil. And brush it over. getting too cold so she won't work even now. So I'll get another heat and we'll finish her up. That's a little bit better. So now what we're going to do is flatten the whole thing to the same thickness as the bar. So I'll wire brush and then we'll flatten right. Now she'll sit flat without sitting up because it's a rounded bar. She's the same thickness as the main bar and the main bolster. So she'll lie flat wherever surface you put her on. So one more last clean up.
So this is what we've ended up with guys. I've just put the sizes on, cleaned it out with a wire brush, put a date on. Now we've got a fully functioning bolster plate, different sizes, which is good to go. So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you, if you want to know how to make the tools to make this tool, then just click in the videos. And uh, what you need is a rain punch and some drifts. Or the easier way to do this is just to drill and I would use anything from 12 mil up to half inch up. Uh, 10 mil or 3 apes is a little bit thin, but other than that, she'll work for what I need it. Thanks again, guys.